Hi everyone, this is Bilal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. Welcome to Android Login Tutorial. And so far we have learned a lot of things in this project. And after doing all these things in this video, finally we will hit our login API. So you might be thinking that we need to do a lot of things while following the proper architectural pattern and proper coding style while doing a simple login call but trust me guys these things are very important and it will help you a lot when you will build some actual applications so these are the things that everyone must learn so finally in this video we will hit our login api so what we will do is we will create a function in our view model then the view model will call the login function from repository and repository will call our login api so let's start doing all these things in this project so i have the function on activity created and we have our layout file ready actually the design ready i'll show you this is my fragment login binding that is my design and to hit the login api first we need to get inputs from these email and password edit texts so let's do it it's very easy you all know it i think so what i will do is inside my on activity created function i will access my binding and from the binding i will access the button login and i will add a click listener like this now after adding the click listener first i will get the inputs so what i will do here is i will write val email equals to binding dot edit text email and then text dot to string dot trim like this the same way we will get input for password so we have binding dot edit text password dot text dot to string dot trim so we have the email and password for now we won't be adding any validations to the email and password we will just hit our api now to hit the api i need to use my view model that we created in the last video so we have our auth view model now what i will do is i will go inside my auth view model and i will define a function here that will hit my login api with the help of a repository so what i will do is i will define a function here so i have fun login and to this function we will pass email that is string and password that is also a string and this function will call the login api of this repository actually the login suspending function now this is a suspending function and to call this function we need a coroutine scope as we are inside view model we can directly use the view model scope so here I will write view model scope dot launch and here I will simply call the function login from this repository instance. So what I will do is I will call this function and this function will return me the response. So we will write here uh, repository dot login and this function will return a resource of type login response. Now to store the login response, I will create a live data here. So I will define val login response and it is of type live data of type resource of type login response like this. We need to import the resource. Now I will create uh, a private val underscore login response because it is a live data and we cannot change the live data directly so i will access this live data outside this view model so that we cannot change it but to access the login response inside this auth view model class i will define an underscore login response and it is now a mutable live data so i will define the type as mutable live data of type resource of type login response now it is a mutable live data like this 
and when we will get the log and response so to the getter i will define log and response so when we will get this log and response that is the live data we will receive this mutable live data as live data and we need this mutable live data to put the log and response value so that's why I define two values one is mutable live data where we can put the value and one is live data that we will access outside the class but it is immutable so let's let's get the login response here inside this login function so I will write here uh, underscore login response dot value equals to repository dot login and I will pass email and password like this so we have our auth view model ready now I will call this function on my on click listener so let's go to login fragment and here I will write view model dot login and I will pass email and password and for now I will add a comment here that to do add validations we will do it later so we have the call to our login function now what we need to do is we need to observe the login response live data so what I will do here is I will write view model dot login response and then observe first parameter is the view lifecycle owner and the next parameter is the observer and here we will get our resource that is of type login response now what we will do is when it and it is resource dot success we will consider this case as success and for now I will just display a toast that is login successful so I will write here require context login successful or I can display the resource dot success dot to string like this sorry not actually resource dot success but we need to use it so here I will write it dot to string and then finally length of the toast and show now if it is resource dot failure we will consider it as failure so here I will display another toast just for now later we will handle the scenarios so for now we can display a toast and I will tell you a quicker way of writing toast so just write toast here like this and you will get a suggestion that create a new toast and select this and the function is automatically called so here we need to pass require context and for the message I will pass login failure just for now so we have our login thing ready and now we can run the application but before running the application I will do one more thing and that is I will add a logging interceptor to my OKSTTP so what I will do is I will add this logging interceptor you can get the link to this page from the description of this video and you can also copy this thing from my source code the link of the source code is also given in the description of this video so I will copy this and I will go to my app level build.gradle file and here I will paste it like this so now the logging interceptor is added in our project and now we will add the logging so what I will do here is just after the function base URL I will call client and here we will use the ok http client class so we have ok http client and then we have builder and inside builder we can write also and here we will get the client and at the end we can build the ok http client so we have the ok http client builder and inside this also block we have the client 
now to add the logging what we need to do is we need to create this http logging interceptor and we need to set the level so i will copy it and i will create the http logging interceptor here and i will create a val here val logging and we have the http logging interceptor and i will set the level to body so we have the login we have set the level to body now finally we need to add this uh, login to our client so here we will write we do not need semicolon because it is kotlin so here we will write client this client instance dot add interceptor and we will pass the login so we have added the login interceptor to our ok http client and now we can see all the requests and responses in our log so that will help us in debugging and now we will actually do one more thing so we will write here if if build config dot debug so if we are running the debug version of the application then only we will add the http logging interceptor now our code is ready and we can test our application so let's run it and see if it is working or not so i think after two three videos we are going to run our application for the first time so we have written a lot of code without even testing so let's see it works or not i'm also not sure whether it's going to work or not so let's see maybe it will crash or it will work or it will do nothing anything can happen so now let's try logging in so i will enter my email here and then password let's click on login and we got the message as login failure and here we can see our request and response so we hit this api and we got the 404 that is not found so our code is working absolutely fine we have a problem in our url so actually i forget to put the api because the url is public slash api and then auth slash login so i will go to my remote data source I told you now it never works on first time so we will go to remote data source and here I will put API as the endpoint now we will try again so let's enter probilalkhan1 at gmail.com and my password and I will hit login so yeah we are getting a success as you can see here so our code is working absolutely fine we hit this api and we get this response so we have the user in the response with auth token so it is working absolutely fine and it worked there was a small issue a mistype but yeah it's working so that is all for this video friends we have finished the login so actually not finished login we just hit the login api and now we need to save the user that we get in the response locally in our application so we can use shared preference or room database for this so i will tell you what we are going to use in the coming videos so for now it is working absolutely fine you can try it and if you are having some problem you can get the source code that is given in the description of this video and finally if you like this video then give me a thumbs up subscribe to this channel and share this video with all your friends and i will see you in the next video so thanks for watching everyone this is bilal khan now signing off